This is the second lesson on transformations of square root functions. In this lesson we're going to focus on horizontal and vertical stretches and compressions. If you'd like to see a lesson first on a uh, square root function using horizontal and vertical translations or using reflections over x and y, you can go to transformations of square root functions number one and do that. Uh, we're going to be working on transformations of the parent function y equals square root of x, which you can see graphed here as a dotted line. Key points in y equals square root of x are that the end point is at 0, 0, and then we have a point at 1, 1 because the square root of 1 is 1. We also have a key point at 4 because the square root of 4 is 2, and then we're going to use a key point at 9, which is... 3 because the square root of 9 is 3. So we'll use those points as we talk about some of our transformed functions uh, that we're going to be using. Let's start with this one. If you have a 2 multiplied by the square root of x on the outside of the function as you do here, this is called a vertical stretch. Anytime you have a number that is multiplied on the outside, uh, it is going to have the effect of stretching the graph upward by whatever factor that number is, as long as that number is bigger than 1. So in this case, we still have an end point at 0, 0, but instead of what we normally do, which is go over 1 and up 1, we still go over 1, but we go up, because it's a vertical transformation, we go up twice as far, the factor of 2. So our new point would be there. Instead of going over 4 and up 2, as we would normally do with our parent, we go over 4 and up twice as far, meaning we go up 4. Finally, all the way over here to 9, when we go up 9, we would normally go up 3 with our parent. We're going to go up twice as far, so we're going to actually go up 6, like this. When we sketch our graph, it looks something like that. You'll notice that this time the graph has been stretched upward. It's as if you reached from the top and pulled up and you've added to the curvature of the graph itself. So this has been stretched by a factor of 2. If that number in front is between 0 and 1, as it is here, it's a fraction 1 half, then this time this is a compression of 1 half, meaning we'll still start at 0, 0, but when we go over 1, the factor being 1 half this time, we will only go up half as much, which is 1 half. When we go over 4, we only go up half as much, half of 2 is 1, and when we go over 9, normally we would be 3, but we're only going to go half that much, so we go 1 and a half. So this time I sketched that graph. It looks much flatter because it's been compressed as if it's been pushed down from the top vertically by a factor of 1 half. So again, when we multiply by a fraction between 0 and 1, that is a vertical compression. The tricky ones are the horizontal ones. That's when we put the number inside and multiply. Here we've multiplied x by 2 underneath the square root. This actually has the effect of being a not a stretch, but a compression of 1 half. If you make the reciprocal, if you flip over the 2 over 1 and make it 1 over 2, that's the compression factor. And what that means is, since it's horizontal this time, we only go half as far to the right as we normally would for the same amount of y going up as the parent. So instead of going over 1 and up 1, we only go over 1 half before we go up 1. And then, instead of going over 4 and up 2, we only go half of 4, we only go over 2 before we go up 2. And then half of 9 that we normally would go is four and a half and we would go over four and a half before we go to three. So again, here's our graph. Looks a little bit like a vertical stretch, but it's actually a horizontal compression. It's as if we have pushed the graph from the right to the left and pressed it in, creating more curve on the graph itself. Uh, any number bigger than one inside multiplied by x or whatever's inside is going to be a horizontal compression. As you might guess, if I use a number like 1 half, this is going to be a horizontal stretch. Again, if you just flip that over, 
2 over 1 or 2. This is a stretch of 2 horizontally because it's underneath. So I'm going to go over twice as far before I go up the same amount as I used in my parent function. So I would normally go over 1, up 1. I'm going to go over twice as far. I'm going to go over 2 before I go up 1. Then I'm going to go over twice as far, which is 4 normally. But I'm going to go twice as far. I'm going to go all the way out to 8 before I go up 2. And I could go twice as far as 9, which would be 18 before I go up 3, but that would be really way out there. So I'm just going to sketch this like this. And it's something like that. Again, this is a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. And whenever we do that, we're thinking stretch as if we took it from the right side and just pulled it to the right, uh, making it a flatter graph. So inside is a stretch. As you can do with a lot of these things, you can go ahead and uh, mix these up. We're actually doing several kinds of transformations here, some of which you already know. Uh, we're doing a plus 2 right here, which is going to move our endpoint to the left 2. A minus 3, which is going to move the endpoint down 3. And then this 2 that we just learned is a vertical stretch of 2. And the minus sign right here is a reflection over x, meaning the graph is going to go downward instead of upward. So let's see if we can do all of that. Let's start by placing our endpoint by going left 2 and down 3. And that's these two things right here and right here. So that gets our new end point. Now we need to deal with the first two things. A reflection, meaning it's going to go down instead of up, and a stretch of two vertically. So I normally would go over one, up one. I'm going to go over one and down, not one, but twice as far, two. I'm going to go over four from my new end point. And I normally would go down 2, but I'm going to go down twice as far, 4. And then I would go over 9 from my new endpoint, And normally down 3, but instead of normal, I'm going to double it, my factor of 2. And I'm going to go down 6, something about right there. And when I draw my graph, like that. I have a reflection over x. It has more curvature to it. It opens downward, uh, but it has more curvature than the parent function, and the end point has been moved left 2 and down 3. So I've been able to graph a fairly complicated uh, function of square root of x simply by looking at the changes that were made to the original function. That's what a transformation is about. Uh, if you'd like to see videos on other topics, I invite you to go to my website at MyMathEducation.com or just simply to the YouTube channel, My Math Education. I have other videos about topics on algebra that I hope you'll take a look at. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see other things, I hope you'll subscribe to my site. Thank you very much for watching and visiting uh, My Math Education.